Hi, my name is Pim. You might recognize me as ABA, it's dangerous, and here is why. Or Homestuck, an essay by a twat. Or you might just recognize me as the asshole that keeps stealing all of the biscuits. Yoink! Anyway, it sure is a busy time nowadays. Everyone seems to have an opinion nowadays for some reason, and I sure miss the time of being able to discuss stuff without it being polarizing, or it devolving into an internet verbal slap fight. I am so glad that non-political spaces online exist, so I can just talk about stuff without the fear of getting into a fight with some fascist. But why is this? Why is this all so heated and hostile? Why do online non-political spaces exist? And are they good? Are they bad? Are they neutral? Let's talk about this. So, for those of you who have been living under a rock for the last 20-30 years or so, or are so entrenched in discourse that you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, allow me to explain. So sometimes if you encounter a community online, on for example a forum or a chat room, you will often find that these communities have specific rules in place to make sure that the community remains a fun place to interact in. One of these rules is often something along the lines of no political discussion unless it's in the designated space, or try to keep political discussion to a minimum. The experience is often that whenever you are discussing a subject and you bring something up that's even remotely political, then you will often have people groaning and asking you to stop, followed by a moderator kindly asking you to cut that shit out. Now some of those among us might get annoyed because everything is politics, to which some other people will disagree and kindly ask you Get that politics out of my hobby that has been explicitly shaped by politics. Okay, maybe it's not quite as black and white as this. I am fairly certain that most people are doing this in good faith, but that does raise an interesting question. Why do people want to avoid political discussion? The answer to this is, well, shockingly simple. Most political discussions, especially online, have a tendency to get a bit um, heated. And often this, all, this often causes a lot of stress and anxiety. This is something you don't want, especially if you come to an online place to, well, relax. Life is hard enough as it is, so why would you want to induce more stress? But why does it get so heated? Shouldn't we be able to discuss the politics that influence our lives in good faith and in calm? For that we need to look at... To understand all of this we need to look at the current state of the world. Most countries in the world are run by what we would call liberal democracies. As a result, um, most of what is seen as politics is seen through a liberal lens. Tristan Johnson, in his video The Real Reason Politics is So Polarizing, makes the argument that because politics is seen through this liberal lens, there exists a disconnect, if you will, between the rich ruling liberal polit political elite and the rest of us on the ground. Now I definitely have some thoughts rega regarding liberal politics and liberalism as a whole, but that's a subject for another video. It should be noted that I will be using the definition of liberalism as it is used outside of North America, as in that it is an ideology that is right-wing to center-right at best. The idea that liberalism is a left-wing ideology is an idea that's really only prevalent in North America. And it's also an idea that does not really hold a lot of water 
if you compare or look at it historically or compare it with political movements across the globe. So, what is this liberal lens then? Tristan argues that in liberal democracies, most politicians are people who are better off than most other people. That is to say that they're the owners of companies or the owners of institutions. One could almost say that they are the owners of the means of production. CIA, open the door. Oh, cut! Anyway, this means that most of these people tend to be more wealthy and, generally speaking, better off. Most of these people don't need to live from paycheck to paycheck or worry where their next meal is coming from. As a result, they make decisions that might have little impact on their own material conditions of living, but often will have negative impacts, impact on those less rough. A liberal government's decision to cut healthcare funding, for example, would destroy the livelihoods of thousands of people. Both healthcare workers, but also people with disabilities who need said healthcare to survive or even function in society. As you can imagine, this causes a lot of friction. People who have not been harmed by these decisions because of the material and the social conditions they were born in don't like it when people who are fucked over by these by bad liberal decisions call them out for it. As an online administrator you then have several options from this constantly spiraling out of control and people fighting constantly. You either wall all the political discussion to a separate space or you outright ban it completely. The first option is probably the better one. However, this does raise another question. What about... One of the most important parts of a good society is the right to free speech. This means that, in theory, you can say your opinions about things without being hindered by the government, large institutions or corporations. In practice, however, this is not really the case. Mia Mulder explains in her video Free Speech and, and Prager U how a lot of free speech is controlled by those who have money. The far right often complains about being censored, but it's a lot easier for them to spread their message because they get funding and corporations tend to favor them over left-wing voices. As it turns out, it's a political movement that outright rejects money, not good at getting money. What a surprise! Also, really Pim? Referencing two YouTubers to support your argument? Come on Pim, you're really un unoriginal. Whatever, I never claimed I was smart. So, where do our non-political spaces fit into this? You could make the argument that limiting political discourse in online communities is limiting free speech and therefore should not be allowed. I personally don't really agree with this. When you enter an online community, you enter a sphere of consensus. And if the consensus does not want you to complain about capitalism constantly, then, well, then you can complain about your free speech being impeded all you want, but it won't get you anywhere. Free speech protects your right to speak your mind, but it does not mean that you should be hurt by everyone. It does not protect you from the consequences of you speaking your mind. If a neo-Nazi starts standing on a soapbox and starts talking about how much he wants to murder in search marginalized group here, then that does not mean that everyone has to agree with him. What should happen is that people would start throwing tomatoes at him and boo him off the soapbox because fuck Nazis. Again though, reality shows that this is not always the case. Like Mia explains in her video, have people in the past leveraged the discourse by throwing money at media groups and therefore making their extremely harmful views known and therefore poisoning the well. Which leads us into...
all media we consume is going to be biased one way or another. Ranging from the opinions of the most powerful people on the planet to random twats on the internet talking about autism spectrum disorder and capitalism. It should not be surprising that most media that is circulated around tends to lean more towards the right than the left. Liberals and conservative groups are invested in pushing their own narratives to maintain the status quo and keep capitalism going. However, here comes the problem. Capitalism is prone to so-called booms and busts. It is an incredibly unstable system that runs on the whims of the powerful whom are barely affected by the busts, whose bill instead goes to the masses that are forced to maintain it and keep it running. As a result of this, there exists more and more a disconnect between the experience of the ruling classes and the rest of us. This is not exactly new. It happened back in the late 1920s, during the Great Depression. It happened in 2008, with the financial crash of the housing market. And it is happening right now because capitalism more and more is reaching more and more the point where it cannot sustain its own motion. This disconnect can go both ways. Some people start to analyze society as a whole and look at the systems that maintain it and then come to the conclusions that says systems are not very good for the whole of humanity. They also find out that there are alternatives which are probably better and will benefit more people. Others will probably blame some minority for the woes of society and adapt an extremely lonely and destructive worldview that could lead to genocide and immense suffering. It should come as no surprise to anyone that I tend to like the former more than the latter. So, where does this leave us? Are non-political spaces good? Bad? Neutral? Personally, I find this to be a very difficult question to answer. I suffer from quite a bit of social anxiety, so discussing heated stuff is sometimes difficult for me, since I tend to get very emotional and often throw myself fully into the conversation, sometimes literally. For this reason, I don't really see any particular need to discuss those on the opposite side of the opinion meter to me. Fascists and conservatives can piss off for all I care. You would think that a non-political space would be good then. However, here comes the problem. Our society is so interconnected with each other that it becomes difficult to near impossible to discuss certain subjects without really getting political. Furthermore, there are subjects like the systemic problems of our society that should be discussed and whose message should be spread far and wide. In this sense, a non-political space with a walled off option for discussing political subjects would probably be the best option. It's not an ideal option though, and as long as this friction exists, probably the best one. As long as this disparity exists between classes and people in general, there can be no political discussion in my opinion without friction or it getting heated one way or another. The answer to this all is probably a systematic uh, reform of all aspects of our society. But that goes beyond the scope of this video or even, the capabil or even my capabilities. With that said, a better world is possible and we can live in solidarity with each other without the need for constant conflict and strife. Hey everyone, thank you for watching my video. I know that I had promised to try this Rensona thing for the coming future, but I did some experiments with it, with vectors and 3D models, and it didn't really work out very well, mostly due to my own inexperiences with these methods of artistic expression. I have also been in a creative slump in general really, because of uh, therapy related reasons that has kind of messed with my mental health a bit. 
it's not as bad as I as it used to be, but I it is not still not great. So you know. With that said, I was very happy when, after a few therapy sessions, my creative drive came back and I managed to write down this, vid this video. And I'm also making this video, so yeah, that was fun. Either way, regarding the future, I cannot really say a whole lot what my direction will be or where I will be going. I will of course keep trying to make videos, but you know, if you can't do it, then you can't, cannot really do it. I'm I'm sad to inform that I cannot really force myself to make videos and adhere to deadlines like most other creators can. Either way, I thank you all for watching and I will hopefully see you all next time.